so beautiful. <laughs> Another very, very special guest tonight who is here to chat with you. He is a return Peace Corps volunteer. He served in Mozambique from 2007 to 2009 as a community development and health volunteer. Uh, he's also a student here at the Ford School of Public Policy and he also studies uh, over at Ross for his MBA. I can personally attest that he is a fantastic soccer player, having uh, scored three goals for us in our soccer game last night, so thank you. Guys. <laughs> so Jimmy is going to talk to you about the meaning of life and peace for a brief summary. Um, and I'll let you take it away. Yeah, thanks Katie. Okay, so before I start, let, let's engage in the traditional Peace Corps volunteer uh, uh, call and response. So when I say peace, you say core. Peace. Core. core. Peace. Core. core. All right, just to be clear, that's not a real thing. <laughs> <laughs> Volunteers don't really do that, so don't go into your country and start trying that. <laughs> it look kind of weird. Um, so I want to thank uh, Katie, and I just met Ben um, for inviting me, and thank you to you guys for uh, lending me your ears for the next 10 to 30 minutes. Um, <laughs> and uh, you know, thanks to take, thanks to the per prospective volunteers for 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 being willing to take this journey. Um, I think at the end of the day, or at the end of your service, you're going to feel like it was the right choice. But I don't want to assume anything right now. Um, and then I also want to thank the uh, the, the the supporters because you guys really make it possible for the Peace Corps volunteers, I would say, to get through the two years. I think every Peace Corps volunteer can attest to that, that a lot of our strength uh, comes from you guys, so thank you. And I will also say that last year, one year ago, at this nomination party, this very nomination party, in the auditorium next to here, the, the, the speaker of the evening was the director of Peace Corps. Uh, Carrie Hessler rattled. So, you guys get me tonight, <laughs> which is just as awesome. <laughs> okay, so I'm, I'm gonna get started. Um, so, I served in uh, Mozambique. Where's my friend? Where's my Mozambican sister? There we go. So, we're gonna talk later. Cool, all right. <laughs> um, yeah, so I'm going to just touch on like a few uh, pretty um, breezy topics, the meaning of life uh, and the meaning of Peace Corps. Um, and I'm going to start off by talking about this right here. Does anybody know what this is? <laughs> There's no stupid response. It's a rainbow. It's a name. It's a, None of those things, and actually these colors are the, the colors of the Mozambican flag. I, I worked a long time last night to create this. Color. That was disrespectful. So, yeah, yes, this, this is a name, this is a name, but, but it's so much more than that, okay? It is my official Peace Corps name, okay? Now, you, guys, you, you may not know what I'm talking about, and even some of the Peace Corps, or return Peace Corps volunteers may not know what I'm talking about. Let me explain. Okay, so there's this magazine that I believe most Return Peace Corps volunteers are familiar with. It's called Worldview Magazine. I believe it's produced by the National Peace Corps Association uh, quarterly. And what is in Worldview is, is basically updates about what Peace Corps volunteers are doing around the world, what Return Peace Corps volunteers are doing around the world. And, you know, it's just filled with articles and it's sent to you free of charge, arrives at your doorstep. Unless you're the guy who's been kicked out of every country. <laughs> Maybe you haven't ever seen it, but you're supposed to. So, let me show you an example. Uh, well, okay, before I get to that. So, so for me, you know, I, I don't know about you guys, but I, I think one of my primary motivations for wanting to do Peace Corps was, was fear. Okay? My biggest fear before Peace Corps was that I was a punk. Okay? And what do I mean when I say that? <laughs> I mean that I grew up in pretty nice surroundings. I grew up with a very loving family. I grew up with, you know, probably all the, the, the conditions that one could hope to have in order to be successful in life, uh, which is great, which is great. Uh, I think I got to a certain point, however, where I felt like I don't actually know how tough I am. I, I've, I've never done anything. The toughest thing I've gone through is, is maybe, you know, training for a soccer season or something like that. So, so I don't know. And I, and I got to a point where I just felt like, I, I have to know. You know, I, it, like, it was eating away at me, 
I would say the final three years of my undergrad, uh, it was just eating away at me. I mean, it was something that was like keeping me awake every single night. You know, I thought, are you, are you a punk? You know, I, maybe I'll never know it, but I, I have to know. So for, so for me, I said, okay, I have to do Peace Corps because I feel like that's the most difficult thing that a person my age can do. I, I have to test myself. I have to put myself up against the most difficult tests. And if I make it through, then I'm not a punk. Okay, so, this, so that was my rationale. So back to my Peace Corps name. The first few months of my service w was a struggle, okay? And that, that's not unique. I mean, a lot of you guys can go through it. You might go through it at, at different times, but at the beginning, it was a struggle. So I was looking for anything, you know, some kind of motivation to, to, to keep me in the game, okay? To make sure I didn't quit, to make sure I didn't ask to go home, okay? And for me, for whatever reason, when I was reading these Worldview magazines, Getting that Peace Corps name was like the most important thing that I could possibly think of. I wanted to become Jimmy Schneiderwin, parentheses, Mozambique 2007 dash 2009, close parentheses. Like that, 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 was, that was all I cared about. I had to get there. I wanted to join that fraternity. So let me show you what I'm talking about. Here, here's an article. Okay. I don't know who this guy is, but. Uh, here you go. So this is Michael Mitchell, Niger, 83 to 85, close parentheses. So that's what I wanted, you know. <laughs> and, and, and I would read those articles. I, every time I read an article and every time one of these, these people's names showed up, I was like, that's going to be me. You know, I, I need that name. And, it, and when I get that name, I'm going to sign my name like that on everything. <laughs> Checks, you know, exams, whatever. Letters, you know, it's all, it, there's no more Jimmy Schneider in after Peace Corps is over. It's just Jimmy Schneider in Mozambique, 2007, 2009. Okay, so. <laughs> no, you guys thought I was playing. I'm real. Okay. So, here's a calculation I did. Okay, I, I'm at the Ford School of Public Policy. It's a quantitative school. I quantified my <laughs> progress toward becoming that Peace Corps volunteer, okay? Getting my Peace Corps name, okay? So here's the calculation, okay? So 365 times two, two years, plus 90, you're all supposed to serve roughly 27 months, okay? So that gives you 820 days, more or less, that you're gonna serve, okay? My Peace Corps name, including the parentheses and the close parentheses, and the dash, Okay, is 38 characters. Okay, so you do the division, and what that means is about every 21 days, I would progress one character in my Peace Corps name. Okay, so what I did is I took a piece of paper, I put it on my door in my house, I wrote out my Peace Corps name in pen, and every 21 days, I would go over the next character in marker. Okay, that's how you know it was legit. And, and on that day, I would treat myself to something special. Okay, maybe it was like an awesome juice, <laughs> some really cool yogurt, or like I would go sit in air conditioning for 15 minutes, but something, <laughs> something where I was like, You are the man today, you are progressing in your Peace Corps name. Okay, so. <laughs> All right, so now you see this, and now you know what I'm talking about. This is, a, this is not just a name, this is my Peace Corps name, okay? So let me show you a picture. <laughs> so this, I, I have a long last name, you guys saw it, it's a long last name. <laughs> so at this point, what, what I'm telling myself is that, look, I still don't know if I'm going to make it through this whole thing without quitting, but I know I'm not going home without my original name. <laughs> I know I'm not going home without Jimmy Schneiderwin. At least, you know, if I'm going to quit, at least let me get Jimmy. I can't be known the rest of my life as Jimmy Schnitt. <laughs> at least let me get to Schneiderwin. Okay. So this next picture depicts a really important moment in my service. <laughs> and let's just take a minute to, to, to absorb how attractive I am in this. It's really awesome. Anyway, so, so this was a really important part of my service. Um, you know, I got to the I got to my name, just leaving the, the kind of like the Peace Corps unique part of it left. And you know, uh, you know, to to, 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 to spoil the, the end of the story, I ended up getting there. Um, yeah. Um, okay, so. <laughs> so, 
I, I pressed on it too early. This was supposed to come up in a couple minutes. But, I mean, I think, you know, looking back on that Peace Corps name, when I look at it now, you know, I, I realized that it was very much connected to the motivation that, that, that drove me to apply for Peace Corps. You know, I was afraid that I wasn't a somebody. I was afraid that I didn't have enough. I was afraid that I wasn't tough. I was afraid that I lacked certain skills to be impactful in this life, to lead a legacy. And for whatever reason, during my Peace Corps service, that getting that Peace Corps name very much represented to me the embodiment of, of me becoming the kind of person that I wanted to be. You know, during my service, I thought all the time, I want to know that guy. Like, I want to know what Jimmy Schneider in Mozambique 2007-2009 looks like. I want to know what kinds of conversations he has. You know, I want to know what kinds of skills he has developed. Okay, so I mean that's that's really why I did the Peace Corps. So this slide, Peace Corps, man, if you think about it, it's a ridiculous <laughs> idea. I mean, it really is. Like, and, and these pictures just, I mean, depict some of the, I mean, like I shouldn't be there. I mean, look at me. Right? <laughs> like these people are like, what, what, who, why is this guy sitting by us? And then you know, um, these experimental dance moves, like. <laughs> Uh, up here in the upper right, I mean, this was this was like seven weeks into training. Uh, uh, Portuguese is the language in Mozambique, and I, I, I didn't speak a lick of it. I mean, I had seven weeks, and I'm up there leading a training with a soccer team using soccer as a metaphor for how HIV attacks the body. That that doesn't make sense. I mean, I, I, I just, and if you really think about it, I mean, think about Peace Corps, like. What, you know, Sergeant Shriver, you know, comes to JFK and says, hey, you know, I got this great idea. You know, I think we need to take these, these overprivileged Americans, you know, we need to send them for two years into places that they've never heard of. <laughs> they don't speak the language. They don't know anybody. A lot of them are liberal, art, liberal arts majors. They're not really bringing skills to the table. And this is, this is the genesis, ladies and gentlemen. This is the genesis for, for Peace Corps. I mean, really, if you think of it, okay? So I always thought this was kind of a crazy idea. Um, but it's been around for, what, 54 years now, okay? So oftentimes I, 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 I try to reflect and I ask myself, I mean, this is crazy. This, this is a ridiculous proposition. Why does it work? You know, so I, I, I came up sort of with a theory while well, I was a Peace Corps volunteer. It's the Peace Corps magic, okay? The Peace Corps magic. It, it, this, is, this is how I thought of it. It's like, you know, you, you put your dirty clothes into the washing machine, you press a button and they come out 45 minutes later or whatever, and magically they're clean. That, that's how I felt with the Peace Corps. I mean, you take these people who almost in every single way are unqualified to do what you're supposed to be doing there. You put them in, and then two years later, you come back, you look at them, they're speaking not just national languages like Portuguese, but they're speaking local, like Shawabu, Chichewa, you know, you know all, all this kind of stuff. They have integrated in their communities in a way where they are beloved, where they have created these friendships and relationships that last, you know, the rest of their lives. Um, and and, and I, I always thought of that, I was like, that... That, that's pretty incredible. I mean, if you think about it, how, how does this occur? You know, you, you, you press start and then two years later you look at these people completely different. But is that the case? Okay. So, I, I mean, you know, when I think about it, I think, do people really fundamentally change during those two years? I mean, obviously you change in terms of, you know, you're able to speak different languages, you get different work experiences. Um, you may become a bit, may, a bit more irritable uh, during your two years, but you know, how, do, do you really change in the most fundamental of ways? Um, and you know, I kind of come back to Cool Runnings, personally. <laughs> I, are people familiar with this movie? Yeah, yeah okay. I'm not trying to condescend. Man. <laughs> <laughs> so, so Cool Runnings, and I'll just kind of like, uh, describe very quickly the, the, the scene where this quote emerges. And so John Candy, for those of you who don't know, he is a coach of a Jamaican bobsled team, also a ridiculous proposition. <laughs> um, and, and he himself was also a bobsledder, I don't know, maybe 20 years before this, this movie is supposed to have taken place. And when he was a bobsledder, he won a gold medal. However, he cheated in order to do it. 
And so the, the, the driver of this Jamaican bobsled, he, he gets this information, he finds out that his coach cheated, and he approaches him about it. He asks him, you know, why is it, why is it that you cheated? And John Candy, you know, talks about wanting to be somebody, you know? And the quote that he says when he's trying to put it in perspective is that if you're not enough without it, referring to the gold medal, you'll never be enough with it. So that seems kind of pessimistic. <coughs> But if you flip it around, I think that another more optimistic way of saying that is that whatever gifts, I mean, whatever is necessary to achieve, you know, great things in life most of the time, I mean, something like Peace Corps, are sometimes gifts that you already have. I mean, gifts that are already inherent in you. The ability to love, the ability to understand other human beings, the, the ability to forge relationships, with other people, you know, these, these, are, these are the gifts that I think that really serve you well going into Peace Corps. You know, it's, it's great to speak the other languages, it's great to have the, the, the work skills. But when it comes down to it, and I think every RPCV here would back me up when I say, it's about relationships. And what facilitates relationships in this context is love and it's understanding. And when you're hurting during Peace Corps, as all of you will, you know, sometimes it is going to be because you're missing the air conditioning and you're missing the yogurt or whatever it is, your, your dog. Um, <laughs> but a lot of times it's because the muscles, you know, that you use to love and understand are not tested here in the United States or, you know, wherever you're from, your community, like they are when you're a Peace Corps volunteer. I mean, they are tested to the max, and I think that's something else that people would back me up on. So a lot of times that pain is just, you know, when you start a new workout routine, you know, and you're doing bicep curls, whatever, for the first time, you're going to be sore. And, and it's, it's similar. It really is similar with Peace Corps. So I want to tell you, you know, one more story, kind of try to wrap things up. Um, and that is that, uh, so I finished my service in 2009. And for the next two years, I would say almost monthly, maybe once every 1.5 months, I would have an anxiety dream, you know, even, even a nightmare to some extent. Uh, I would dream that I, I had arrived in the provincial capital in the province where I live. So I lived in a province called Zambezia, it's in the north. Uh, and the capital is Kilimani. And so I, I arrived there for some kind of like public health conference, you know. And, and I'm there, we just finished the, the, the meetings for the day. And I think to myself, I need to go to Nicodala. So that's, that's my town. Nicodala is about 40 minutes outside of Kilimanjaro. So I get in one of these mini buses and I start traveling the road to Nicodala. This is a ride that in real life I've taken, I don't know, 200 times. And I can picture everything vividly. You know, I see the streams next to the road. I see the, the people the, selling the fish that they caught for the day. I see the rice patties. You know, I can smell sometimes the, the burning, you know, associated with the uh, agriculture cycle. Um, I mean, I see it all, you know, and, and I start coming into town on the minibus and I can see the soccer fields and I see my teammates. And I get to the stop that I always get off at, at uh, in, in Nicodala. And I get off and I start walking towards my house and I see my friends and the people that I consider to be family members and they start walking toward me and I start walking toward them. And, we have our arms out, you know, we're about to hug each other, this triumphant moment. And just as we're about to hug, the dream ends. And I had that same exact dream for two years. I mean, every month, every month and a half. And I couldn't figure it out, you know. I mean, I, I'm not a psychologist, so I, don't, I don't know what's behind that. But, bef you know, I did know that I was starting school here in fall of 2012. And I, I felt like I needed to go back. You know, I, I didn't know what I was looking for. Uh, I didn't know what I was trying to accomplish while I was there, but I, I felt like I had to go back. So two months before I started classes here, I go back to Mozambique, um, and I fly up, and I go to Nicodala. And, you know, it was amazing. I mean, it was, it was just amazing. I mean, people remembered me. I think I had anxiety about that. Uh, I saw a kid from my soccer team you know, this guy hasn't seen me in two years, and he's like, hey, Jimmy, you know, how's it going? I was like, hey, yo, I'm good. He's like, why have you been missing practice? <laughs> <laughs> I 
showed up to practice that day. <laughs> I saw my coach, you know, my old, my former coach. He said the same thing. He's like, Jimmy, why are you late? <laughs> <laughs> well, coach. <laughs> you know, and uh, so here's some pictures from that trip. These are people, you know, I consider my family members. Um, Shoy, Gida, Ilda, Constantino, Elidio, uh, Alfredo, those on the upper right. This is my most ambiguous mother. It's close to a biological mother besides my biological mother that I have, Ana Maria. This is my host mother, and these are her two siblings, Sipo on the right, and this is her sister on the left. I never got her name. I don't think she ever got mine, but she did ask me to marry her. So <laughs> I felt like it'd be good to include a picture of her. <laughs> um, and so I took that trip, you know, had these great experiences. I haven't had the dream once since then, you know, it's been about three years now. Um, and, and I think it's because from, from my perspective, I, I feel like I understand better that Peace Corps magic. I feel like I've been able to deconstruct it, sort of in the way that I explained to you guys earlier. You know, it's funny, before I went to Peace Corps, you know, I had this fear, am I a punk? You know, I'm not enough, you know? And then after I, had peace, after I did Peace Corps, I have this other fear where I think, I lost it, you know? Whatever skills that I developed during Peace Corps to, 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 to create this kind of love and to be part of this kind of community, I don't have it anymore. And so the one drove me to go to Mozambique for Peace Corps and the other one drove me to come back to, to, to understand better. Um, and I think, I mean, again, what I come back to is these are skills, you know, the love, the understanding um, that, are, that, are, that are part of me. And, you know, judging by the, the type of family and friend support that a lot of you guys have here today, I'm sure that they're part of you. So, in conclusion, you know, I, I promised the meaning of life in Peace Corps. Uh, spoiler, I'm not going to, I don't know what the answers are to those things. Um, but I do think that, that that's what you have to keep in mind, you know, when you're going in, that you will be stretched, but it's because your heart is stretching. And you will have times where you're, when you're in pain, but that's because you're forced to love and understand in ways that maybe you've never had to do before. Um, but you're ready. You know, I really believe that all of you are ready. I mean, that's, that's, the, that's the thing that a lot of Peace Corps volunteers understand. You get to the site and you go through trials and tribulations for maybe the whole time, you're, most of the time that you're there, but you get to a point at the end where you look in the face of somebody that could not have a more different life experience than you, and, and you see a friend. I mean, you see a mother, you see a brother, you see a sister, and you have these lifelong relationships. So that is my talk. Um, I want to wish all of you guys luck, and you know, relax a little bit, because you're gonna do fine. Thank you. Thank <laughs> you.